Hi, this is Matt McCormick at the Department of Philosophy, California State University, Sacramento. There's my email address and my course website. Probably the fastest way to get my course website would be to just Google McCormick Philosophy. And I want to talk just briefly about the generalities of taking a course, a philosophy course online. So first off, there's some downsides. Um, a lot of people think of this as um, uh, online course being much easier, for instance, um, and that's the problem. Doing an online course is probably not easier than taking one in class. In fact, it's probably harder. Expect to spend as much time or more and effort as you would spend in a normal class. Um, you might think you'd just, might, you'd just be able to watch some videos, listen to some podcasts, take some tests, and you'd be done, and you'd have more time to work and play, etc. But Probably you're not going to have as much. You may have to put more time into it. Um, but the time that you do spend on the course will be more flexible since we're not anchored down to a single classroom or <clears throat> time of the week. Uh, in the way, in some ways it's harder. You don't have as much contact with the professor or other students. You won't have me there in person to remind you about deadlines and having a person in the classroom really helps. Um, we operate better as humans when we see each other face to face. Uh, recorded lectures can be harder to follow than the lectures in person because you can't uh, raise a hand, ask a question, or clear, clear something up that you're not understanding right away. Um, you are solely responsible for keeping track of the deadlines, assignments, dates, tests, and so on. That can be much harder because out of sight, out of mind, you're not there in the classroom and I'm not there reminding you about stuff, although I will be sending out emails and um, notifying people, but you know, getting an email or contact online, um, tech, uh, uh, you know, stuff that's written out in an email is not the same as having a person say it to you. And you can't, like I said, you can't ask questions during a lecture, so those things can be worse. Uh, however, there are some upsides. You can watch and rewatch the lectures as much as you like. Uh, I think, in general, my lectures are better organized and clearer online than they typically are in class. <clears throat> But that turns out to be probably why they're a little less exciting in class. Uh, uh, believe it or not, I'm much more entertaining, and I go off on direct digressions, and I tell jokes. And on my online lectures, I'm just jamming through the material, and it's a bit more dry. So you're going to have to learn how to uh, work through organized material that's delivered by way of a video lecture format. Everything's on my YouTube channel, and I'll show you all that stuff um, by way of another video and the syllabus. The upside, of course, like I said, is that we're not anchored to a place in time for lectures, so there's a lot more flexibility. You will need more self-discipline. Uh, an organization than you're used to having. Uh, you'll need to find the online materials, the assignments, do them on time, turn in your work, check your email, keep your calendar, and manage your time. And a lot more of that responsibility is on you when we do it all in the online format than it would be in the other case. We won't have the two to three hours of class time with me reminding, organizing, and running things in the classroom. Technical issues. You will need a reliable computer with reliable internet access. This won't be uh, a viable excuse for not doing course material if you don't have that. You're taking an online course, you've got to have a machine that works. In fact, um, I think you should have two of them. Have another computer with reliable internet access available so a friend, a family member, or a computer lab at CSUS will have one so that you've got a backup and you can get to that backup quickly. Uh, it won't be a viable excuse for not doing course materials that your internet was down or that software is not working or the computer is not working. Uh, that is the single most important uh, path or gateway to the course material in this class. If you don't have this, you shouldn't take the course. Um, you need to take care of problems, technical problems you're having early. If you're having some issues with software or the SAC CT, get a hold of the SAC CT people or me right away. Don't wait till the end of, say, a testing period. Do a Blackboard SAC CT check on the main login page before taking an exam or quiz. I wouldn't wait to the very end of the quiz, quiz period to get on there and see if it works and get familiar with the SAC CT and Google Docs situation fast. And in my other video, my other introductory video the structure uh, about the structure of my online course, I go through how to set all that up and how to get access to all that stuff. Um, studying is harder and different. And let me just offer some general advice. 
uh, don't multitask while you're studying course materials. This doesn't, doesn't just go for my course, it goes for all college classes. Research shows that having music on, doing the internet, doing Twitter, Facebook, videos, texting, all that causes poorer performance on the main task. Um, people don't feel like they, that's true. They think they can juggle these multiple um, uh, tasks while they're doing one thing. But in fact, when you research this, every, their, their performance degrades. Um, study time needs to be quality focused study time. You need to be careful about that. <clears throat> in, uh, furthermore, in many classes, uh, you can read an assignment once and get by uh, with the techni with technical philosophy uh, articles like the stuff we're going to be reading and the lectures. You'll often need to read it several times before you understand what's going on. So uh, don't be surprised if you don't get it the first time. That can be very discouraging. So you may have to read it four or five, six times. Uh, but some of the most of the readings are fairly short, so they make up for um, uh, the the. Uh, uh, Instead of having a long, lengthy assignment to read, you've got a short assignment to read, but you've got to spend some more time on it. Take responsibility for all your duties as a student. Record all assignment due dates in a calendar. Get to work on assignments early. Seek out help and guidance on assignments from the instructor. And again, my email is mccormick at csus.edu. When you're watching the lectures or you're reading the articles, take careful notes. Listen carefully. Rewind. Write down important concepts, principles, questions. Um, the act of writing uh, research has shown is much more effective for learning so that by typing or writing out these ideas as you're listening or uh, listening to the video or you're reading uh, the, the act of writing, you know, going from I um, out through your finger, turns out that helps you learn it, helps you retain the material much better. So just sort of um, passively watching or absorbing won't be nearly as good as actually taking notes. And then you review your notes before you take the quizzes. Okay, uh, grades, let me just say a bit of obvious advice. Don't skip assignments. This uh, has proven to be one of the most, uh, most serious problems that students have in all my classes, online or not. Uh, you think you can skip an assignment or two, and since you're making decent grades on your other stuff, you'll be okay. But look, a zero in the grade book for an assignment um, that has, say, 10% uh, value for the whole course, if you get that zero there, it has a disastrous effect on your final grade because it pulls your others down. Even if you've got A's and the others, that zero can pull the others down to a C and really uh, wreck your grade overall. Do all of the assigned readings, um, all the, assigns, uh, uh, the assignments. Keep an accurate record of your grades and your overall standing in the course. Some of that will be recorded in the SAC CT gradebook, so you can get it there. Um, there's a full breakdown of the grading structure for the course on the syllabus. That's linked on my main page. There's the address from my main page. But again, just Google McCormick Space Philosophy and you'll find it. And there's all the, the information, syllabus, calendar, Google Groups, and the other material. Okay, now uh, I will drop one low quiz score during the semester, so that will help. I do build in a lot of um, slack here. I also allow two attempts on many quizzes. Do not pass up the chance to improve your grade. So even if you get a good grade on the first one, take the second one. It's a chance to learn the material. It's a chance to prepare for the midterm or the final. It's a chance to bump the grade up even more. Um, and I it, later at the end of the semester, if you're asking for some kind of lenience or you're wanting some special treatment, look, if you've skipped uh, options or skipped uh, possibilities where you could have taken another quiz and you didn't, that's not going to fare well for you. Uh, I will also have an extra module at the end of the course, and that's going to be an article, a lecture, and a quiz at the end of the course that's optional. Um, you can do that to bump up your grade or replace another low grade, but let me warn you now, the end of the semester you'll be all backed up with uh, too much work from other courses, and the module I'm adding to the course is not um, an easy one, so it'll take a lot of work. So the big point here is that um, Oh, and about that extra module. If you do it and if you score higher on the quiz for that one than one of your other quizzes, I will replace that low grade. So the bigger point here is that I've got lots of opportunities built into the course for you to get a second chance 
um, improve your standing, but it takes a lot of work. So there's lots of opportunities here to improve your grades, but if you don't take them, you won't be able to avail yourself of it and won't bump it up. I won't have sympathy for students who don't avail themselves of these opportunities, but then complain about their poor grades at the end of the semester. And on that topic, let me show you, um, uh, let's actually do some actual philosophy here. Let's talk about confirmation bias. Um, this, is, uh, this is the fallacy or the mistake of selecting evidence that corroborates a pet hypothesis while ignoring or neglecting evidence that would disprove it. And humans are guilty of committing it in a wide range of circumstances. Um, and here's what they do. Um, I'll give you an example. Here's an actual student email from a previous semester. A student emailed me and said, I just checked my grades for the spring semester and I was surprised that, that I've earned an F. And um, I've highlighted some stuff in red here. Uh, the student said, I completed the major assignments for the course and I did well in the midterm and I did well in the final. I don't, um, I know I didn't participate in the online forum as much as was required, but I'm still confused about the grade. I took the class material seriously and I did my best on every assignment that was assigned. Okay, so here's what I said back, to, here's what I sent back to the student. Here are the grades that I have for you. The syllabus in, gives the details about the grade structure. Check the math and check your returned assignments to make sure it's all right. If there's a clerical error, I'll fix it right away. But now look at the stuff in red. For the question sets, this student skipped three of them worth 6% each. Three, zero, uh, three zeros here, so that's 18%. First paper got a 78, midterm got a 90, second paper 85, final outside projects. And then Google group participation, this is a discussion group for the course, the student did zero contribution here. And that was worth another 10% or so of the grade. Attendance and participation, the student fell behind there and got a zero for that part. So look at all the reds here. So between the skipped question sets, the group discussion, and attendance, you gave up 34% of the course grade. Even if you were making an A on everything else, that would put it down to a D. So here's a really flagrant example of somebody committing confirmation bias. And they're doing it about their grades. You don't want to make this mistake, right? You don't want to pick out the few good grades. And there are a couple of good grades here. But look, you skipped all this other material, and you didn't get that stuff turned in. So confirmation bias is this mistake of selecting the good stuff, picking out the information you like, the stuff that supports this idea you have in your head that you're doing well in the course, and then look at the um, glaring contra, uh, contrary evidence in red here. That'll kill your grade. So that's why this student got an F. And I get examples of this every semester. Okay, so let's talk about scheduling. Um, this online course can't be put off for a week and then picked back up. You don't have that much flexibility. It's not like you can sort of jam out all the material um, in a rush and then have a break. I'm going to be feeding out material every week, and it's tiered and um, uh, built up over the course of the semester, so you can't um, afford to skip or back off or check out for any of that period. Um, plan ahead for requisite study time, paper writing, assignments, and test preparations. Be realistic about how many classes and how many activities you have, like hours at work, that you can handle. Don't fall behind. Mind. Don't leave assignments for the last minute. Glitches happen all the time, and the universe doesn't care about you, so be sure you're taking care of your responsibilities. Set a time and a date for when you will work on this course and keep yourself to it. Schedule it in your calendar. See, that's the sort of um, organization and self-discipline that's very rare. I think very few people do this. Hell, I don't even do all of that stuff for lots of my responsibilities. But taking an online course, you probably need to be that organized. Um, and that gives us a chance to talk about another really interesting human fallacy. This one's called the planning fallacy. Um, so you recognize from the picture that that's the new span of the Bay Bridge. Um, when they originally uh, uh, planned this thing out, maybe you've driven over it now that it's open. When they originally planned this thing out, it was estimated to be completed in 2007. It was going to cost $1.4 billion. When it was done in 2013, six years late, it cost $6.4 billion. Here's another example. Uh, the Sydney, Sydney Opera House was estimated to be done in 1963 for seven million. It was completed in 1973 for 102 million dollars. Uh, here's the Big Dig project in Boston, a major highway reconstruction project in downtown Boston. It was originally estimated to cost 2.8 billion dollars and completed in 1998. It wasn't done until 2007 and it cost 14.6 billion dollars. So what's going on here? How is it that people are such bad um, estimators of how long and how much work it's going to take to do a project? And the thing is, we do this over and over and over again.
again. Every city in the country, probably every bridge that's been built in the country has fallen prey to this very same mistake, and students do it too. Here's the thing. Humans systematically overestimate how much they can get done. They predict tasks will take less time and energy than they'll actually take. They predict that they will get better outcomes than they do. Even when you show them that they've made these mistakes in the past, they still make the mistake. You can show somebody they're really bad at this estimate and they'll continue making the mistake. Um, here's a research example, a study. Uh, researchers asked some students, when do you think you will complete your academic project? They were in a class and they had a big project coming up and they asked them to put some estimates on how long stuff is going to take. When will it be 50% likely that you will, you will be done with that project? When will it be 75% likely that you're done with the project? When will it be 99% likely that you're done with the project? So the, the goal was to ask students, okay, you've got to do this project. Now you give me an estimate. How long, at what point in time in the future, will it be 99% likely that you're done? Okay, so, so in effect, we're just asking them, how long is this going to take you? So then they, they let the students go ahead and do the assignment, and then they came back and checked their actual results with what they estimated. And here's the results. The results are just astounding. Only 13% of the subjects, the students finished their project by the time they had assigned a 50% probability level. Okay, so um, you would expect uh, lots, of, lots more of them to have that. And here's the really uh, interesting results. 19% finished by the time that they figured seven, they had a 75% probability level being done. And the kicker is only 45% of them finished by the time of their 99% probability level. So this is amazing, right? Um, you take the day where they thought they were 99% sure they're going to be done and less than half of them were actually done then. So they uh, systematically underestimated how much it was going to take for them to get done. Um, and you're probably doing this right now about your college classes. I'm doing this about lots of things in my life. It's something that humans just do. We do it over and over and over again. Uh, it takes an enormous amount of self-discipline and sort of honesty about your own performance to see um, and prevent yourself from making the mistake. Uh, uh, you are overestimating how many school hours you can take on, how many hours you can work this semester, how many fam family and social obligations you can keep up, how much exercise you can do, how many pounds you can lose, and so on. So the point here is, that you need to compensate for your planning fallacy tendency. Learn from past experience, have realistic expectations about what you can pull off. Okay, so uh, in general for the course, uh, here's how you get help. You need to ask me or ask the Google group, discussion group right away if you're not certain about something. Make use of all the modes of class communication, email, Google group, discussion group, uh, my, office hour, my office hours when looking for information, the discussion board announcements before contacting the professor. Almost all the information about my course is on the syllabus, it's on the course policies, uh, it's on the schedule, on the calendar, it's all out there already. Check for deadlines and due dates. Uh, form virtual study groups through the Google uh, discussion group that can help too. The resources you have, there's my email again, McCormick at CSUS.edu, my main web page, Google McCormick Philosophy. Uh, there's the actual address, which is a bit um, hard to keep track of. My course policy sites is right there, and that's actually linked on my main uh, website. Uh, the philosophy department webpage has a lot more resources for general uh, taking philosophy classes uh, uh, help. Uh, the Google discussion group that we'll be doing. There's also a philosophy department writing guidelines that are listed on that, um, that course page. Now, uh, forgive me for being uh, patronizing here, but past experience has taught me that I probably need to just ask or point out something obvious. Um, look, you've got to take care of some basic human needs before you can do any uh, college stuff. Uh, are you getting enough sleep, particularly before you do important assignments and tests? There's a big question. And this is going to be more relevant when we're in week 14, right? When all this is catching up to you um, and uh, things in your life are overwhelming you. Uh, are you eating well and at the right times? You've got to do that in order to succeed. You've got to take care of basic organic needs. Are you getting regular exercise? Um, I won't put it on you to look like Arnold, but you do need to get some exercise. It helps with so many things. It helps with learning. 
it helps with brain um, uh, uh, metabolism. It'll uh, uh, help lots of aspects of your life. Are you working too many hours to be able to balance school and a healthy life? Is your life in general balanced? I'll just ask those questions. Um, sorry to be uh, paternalistic, but uh, past experience has, has uh, taught me that just raising that obvious these obvious set of points is enough to remind people that they probably need to plan to take care of all that stuff. Okay, now a word about cheating. No cheating of any sort will be tolerated in this course. All sources and written work must be cited and given appropriate credit, stuff from the internet or any other sources. The author of any information from the internet um, or another student uh, from class must be given credit using such information without indicating the source is stealing somebody else's hard work and it's immoral. It's also against university policy. Cutting and pasting somebody else's work is not acceptable. It's also unacceptable to make minor revisions in language to disguise someone else's sentences or ideas and treat them as your own. And here's the university statement about cheating. This is how they define it on our university policy manual. It's the act of incorporating into one's own work the ideas, words, sentences, paragraphs, or parts thereof, or, or the specific substance of another's work without giving appropriate credit, thereby representing the product as entirely one's own. Examples include um, not only word-for-word -word copying, but, only, uh, but also the mosaic uh, 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 method, copying another's work, the paraphrase, fabrication, ghost writing, and failure to include quotation marks on material that is otherwise acknowledged. Um, and representing one, as one's own um, another's artistic or scholarly work, such as musical compositions, computer uh, programs, photographs, paintings, drawings, sculptures, and similar works. And that's just to say that um, we won't tolerate anybody saying, oh, I didn't know that was cheating. There's the definition. You're responsible for it. Um, all of these links to the university policy manual are on my course policies page, and you will be held to them. Um, and it's not any different because it's a, uh, an online course. Now, the fact that it is an online course means that I've structured things a bit differently. Obviously, students are allowed to discuss lectures and even assignments with each other. I, I wouldn't pretend to discourage that. I'd even, in fact, I'm going to encourage you to do it. I think you should collaborate on many of the assignments. You should talk about uh, the readings, talk about the ideas. I think that's good for people. I don't think that's cheating. I think that um, is actually uh, uh, sort of effective pedagogy and effective learning. But everybody has to do their own work. You have to do your own quizzes and write your own materials. And here's the problem is if you use somebody else's or have somebody else do it, um, you, you run a really high risk. So if you're the person who's maybe offering up some material, be cautious about sharing your notes, your ideas, your work, your assignments, or papers with other students. Because here's how I treat those, and here's what's happened in the past. Once you've given somebody a copy or access to your work, you can't control what they do with it. And I've had cases in the past where somebody has shown their notes or shown their work to somebody else, and then the other person copied it and used it, and then both students got in trouble for it. So the person who did the hard work got treated the same way as the person who plagiarized. All of the students will receive the same punishment. I'm not going to discriminate in those cases. Everybody is going to get failed from the course and get dis going to get sent to um, the administration for disciplinary action, even if one person did the work and the other person plagiarized. And there's a link to the actual um, university academic honesty policies. Okay, now, in general, an online course um, here's how things are going to work. Online, when you're online, students have access to class notes, the readings, the materials, the lectures, and other class materials during the tests. The tests, the quizzes I give are designed with that expectation in mind. Um, the, because the way I've got the test set up, certain kinds of behavior is going to be very difficult. The quizzes are usually short. They're only 30 minutes, and there's 10 or more questions in there. So you have to do these questions pretty quickly. On average, it takes people about two minutes to do a multiple choice question. If you haven't done the readings or haven't done the work beforehand, you won't be able to just go start looking for the answer when you're in the quiz. You will need to be thoroughly prepared before you start the quiz. You can't pause the quiz. Um, uh, save it, go out, and come back. You have to do it all in one sitting, and you can't backtrack. So that makes um, uh, certain kinds of ev evasive behaviors very difficult. 
No backtracking on questions during the quiz. Correct answers to the quizzes will not be available until after the whole testing period closes. So even though you get to take it twice, you're not going to be able to know exactly the correct answers. You're only going to know that you got uh, specific ones wrong. So you're going to have to figure out why and how you got those wrong and figure out the right answers when you go back and take it the second time. Um, the best way, I think, the easiest way to do well in the course is just to study. It's going to be too risky to try to get somebody else to do it or to um, risk not being prepared when the quiz opens. Um, the assignments in the course will take a large investment of time, energy, and concentration to master the material to a high enough level to pass. Somebody else who hasn't invested that work will not do as well on the test for you. They won't be able to do better than you would if you just did the required work. It'll be very difficult to get somebody else to take the course for you or do a better job in the assignments than you would since they don't have the same investment in it. Um, there will be more details about how this course runs in the next le lecture uh, video on my YouTube channel. Okay, so let's get started. Check my syllabus and schedule online to get started with the first week's activities. Watch the other video lectures for the first week on my YouTube channel. Do the readings for the first week. Um, study for and then take the first quizzes. And I'll be sending notices out on email about um, what's next.